Shalom everybody, we're going to uh, do the counting of the Omer for tonight. Baruch atah Yehua el reinu melech haolam, at sheer kitshani bimitzvota vitzivani, al safirat haomer hayom yom arba. Blessed are you Yehua Elua, king of the universe, who has brought forth the commands and commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day four. Amen. Praise Abba Yahuwah. So yes, as we continue to count our Omar, and as we are now embarking on this journey of reading the book of Jeremiah, and tonight we embark on chapter 6 as we continue. O children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. Blow a shofar in Tekoa and set up a signal fire in Beth Hekarim, for evil has been seen from the north and great destruction. Interesting how right now in the north there seems to be destruction going on, where it doesn't seem like this war with Russia is coming to a, to a halt as he's now reinforcing his forces and being more aggressive now in his strategic plan. So isn't that interesting? And the shofars are blowing. And as the shofars blow, we are to understand that we are being prepared for the coming of the king. And so as we go into embark this chapter, we must understand that as it was before, so it shall be again. And I shall cut off the lovely and delicate one, the daughter of Zion. The shepherds with their flocks shall come to her. They shall pitch their tents against her all around. They shall pasture each one in his own place. Set apart battle against her. Arise and let her go up at noon. Woe to us, for the day goes away, for the shadows of the evening are lengthening. Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy her places. Interesting how it's in the night that they are going to arise. And that's why Yeshua said we are to work while it is daytime. Because when the night time comes, destruction is on its way. And they attack in the night. For thus says Yehu of hosts, cut down her trees and cast up a siege, mount against Jerusalem. She is the city to be punished, in whose midst there is only oppression. Now, how interesting. How this was then, but if we see what is going on now, just a few days ago, even this weekend that's just gone by on Friday, the riots on the top of the Temple Mount, Ya yeah, as the Jewish People were celebrating their Passover on the Friday. Sitting at the Kotel, they started throwing rocks down on the people. So you've got Christian people there that were celebrating Good Friday. They were celebrating the Easter weekend. And then there was people, wasn't this weekend, was the weekend before on the 15th, and then there were Christians there celebrating the Easter weekend. You've got the Jews celebrating their Passover. And now, yeah, are the Arabs on the top of the Temple Mount throwing rocks onto the people below. So you see, there is only oppression because as much as they think they want freedom in that land, that land is far from them walking in freedom. I saw something... Yesterday, how I saw a video of how these three uh, Jewish men were on their way to the Kotel and they were, they were assaulted and kicked and violently attacked as they were on their way to have prayer. So you see the oppression. As a well flows with water, so she flows with her evil. Violence and destruction are heard in her before me continually are suffering and smiting. And this is exactly what is going on. You see, that land is not a land that lives in peace at the moment. There is a lot of um, undercurrent um, 
there is a lot of animosity and there is a lot of violence that is there and there is an underlying um, like a, a, a war that is on the horizon. Be instructed, O Yerushalayim, lest my being be torn from you, lest I make you a waste, a land not inhabited. And this is exactly what happened. Israel became a land not inhabited. Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, let them thoroughly glean as a vine the remnant of Israel. Pass your hand again over the branches like a grape gatherer. To whom shall I speak? And give warning, so that they hear. See, their ear is uncircumcised. Now, is this not where we are today? He is speaking. He is warning. He is wanting people to open their ears, but their ears are uncircumcised. Why are they uncircumcised? Because they're fleshly. Because they chase after their fleshly ways. They want to be able to be, you see, the circumcision is the circumcision of the flesh. It's the circumcision so that we may be able to be in covenant with the Father. But the ears are not open to hear Father's ways and Father's covenant ways. It's uncircumcised. And they are unable to listen. You see, why are they unable to listen? Because they don't want to hear a hard word. Because they don't want to hear a word of destruction coming their way. They only want to hear the nice soft message. The nice prospering message. Not that destruction is going to come our way. See, the word of Yahuwah is a reproach to them. They do not delight in it. You see, because we must understand, Father, as much as he's loving and he's kind, he's just and he's upright and he's righteous and his righteous judgments have to stand against wickedness. And this is what we've got to understand. He's not just going to continue to allow sin to pile up and pile up and pile up and he's going to stand back and do nothing. He's giving the people time to repent. But you know when the vats are full from the grape pressing, when the vats are full, they will burst and the destruction is going to come. Therefore, I am filled with the wrath of Yahuwah. I have become weary of containing it, pour it out on the children outside and on the company of young men together. For even husband and wife shall be taken, the aged and the very old. So you see, Father is not going to spare those that are going to be wicked. And so we must understand, we fight battles, but the battle must always be a battle for Abba Yahuwah. The more we know what pleases him, the more we are accountable to be able to do what is right. And their houses shall be turned over to others, fields and wives together. For I shall stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, declares Yahuwah. So you see, he is warning. He's blowing a shofar right in the beginning. It's telling us the blowing of a shofar to bring us to a place of repentance. But what are the people? They are uncircumcised. They are uncircumcised of ear. Why? Because I don't want to hear any judgment or any destruction coming my way. Verse 13. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, they are all greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, all act falsely. Now, is that not where we are today? Because you see, at the end of the day, if the prophet and the priest are not the ones warning the people, then what do we have? It is all false. It's all this prosperity and blessing. But where is the word to tell us that if we continue in our sinful ways, there is destruction going to come our way? We cannot continue to be an abomination before the Father and to continue in our abominable place and abominable state and think that he will continue to bless us. 
and they heal and breach of my people, and thou and they heal the breach of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when where is no peace. So you see, this is what they preach. Peace. No, we don't have to worry about anything. And you know what? Don't worry about it because you know what? We are all going to be taken out of here. We don't need to worry about repenting. You know, we just need to pray that he needs to do what we want him to do. But don't even ask us to pray and repent. And this is what we must understand. The message that needs to be coming is we have gone astray. And we need to come back and we need to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And now we get to the crux of the matter. Were they not ashamed when they had done abomination? You see, this is the thing. The abomination continues. No, they were not at all ashamed, nor did they know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. They shall stumble at the time I visit them, says Yahuwah. So I tell you something. We must understand something, that we are going to see many prophets and many priests falling because as they are called the ones continuing to say peace, peace, when destruction is going to come, they are the ones that are going to be able to fall in the same destruction as the people that they've been speaking to are going to fall into destruction. It's the blind leading the blind. Thus says Yahuwah, Thus says Yahuwah, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for yourselves. But they said, we do not walk in it. Now, is this not where we are? Is this not where we are, where the Father is now raising up his truths? Where the Father right now is getting people to return back to the ancient paths? Jeremiah 6.16 is the very foundation of the scripture that the Father gave me when I was to, have to come back to his Torah ways. But now we will go to people in the church and what do they do? They persecute us and they say we're putting ourselves in bondage. And the law has been done away with and all these things have been done away with. As far as they're concerned, it's even the commands have been done away with because people don't even want to keep not even the commands of Abba Yahuwah. But what is he saying? Go and search, stand in the ways and see and ask for those ancient paths. So you see, if people are not truly seeking Abba Yahuwah for the truth and if they don't have a love for truth, they're not going to come to these ancient paths. And so you see, he says we are to find the good way. That's why he says we are to walk in the way that he's already put before us. This is not a new way. It's the way that's been from the beginning. This was the way of the foundation that was given us. But what have we done? We've come away from the very foundation. Yeshua says we are to build our house on a solid foundation. This is the foundational covenant that we've been given. This is our foundational covenant. Torah is our foundational covenant. So how do you build a house without a foundation? So how do we just have a Jesus and we don't have the foundation of that the Father's laid out before us? He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He doesn't change. He's put his foundation from the beginning. And so we continue to read in verse 17, and it says, And I raised up watchmen over you and said, Listen to a voice of a shofar. But they said, We do not listen. So do you see? Father has raised up watchmen, and the watchmen are blowing the trumpet. The watchmen are blowing the shofar. The watchmen are trying to, to warn the people. They are a voice of a shofar. They are shouting to the people. They are speaking the truth to the people. They are telling the people to repent and to come back to the Father. These are his watchmen. They are watching. They are seeing. They see. Remember what he said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, what do you see? A boiling pot you have seen right. A, 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 an almond uh, a tree blossoming you have seen right. There's destruction on its way. But you see, what are the watchmen doing? What are they listening to? What are they watching? Are they listening? Are they blowing the shofar? 
Are they seeing and hearing what the Father is saying to be able to speak from his heart? And now so sad where they said, we do not listen. So they don't want to listen. Nobody wants to listen to a harsh word. Nobody wants to listen to a word of judgment or a word of destruction. Nobody wants to hear that because everybody will turn around and say, oh, do you always have to just speak negative? Why do you be? Why do you have to be so negative? Now imagine, if we didn't have people warning and if everybody was just speaking positive, then where is the warning? Therefore here, you nations and know, O congregations, what is upon them. Hear, O earth, see, I'm bringing evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not listened to my words, nor my Torah, and they rejected it. Now understand something. If these were his chosen people, the house of Israel were his chosen people, and they refused to listen to his Torah, they refused to listen to his words, they rejected it, and he did not embrace them. He sent them into exile. Now, what makes us think that we as believers who are now received Messiah Yeshua, received the Ruach HaKodesh, have been grafted in to this covenant, and we choose not to receive it? We are a branch then sapping of our own. And what is going to happen to that branch? They will be cut off. And so he says in verse 20, And need have I, what need have I of frankincense from Sheba? And sweet cane from a distant land. Your ascending offerings are not acceptable, and your slaughterings have not been sweet to me. So we are offering him all our good works. And we think that our good works are, are acceptable to him. And when I say your good works, I will say, like, for example, maybe you go to church, maybe you're reading your Bible, and you're doing all these things, but you're not coming back to the truth of his word. You read the Bible just for more knowledge, but you don't read the Bible to be able to allow it to change you. Because at the end of the day, what does it help you to be able to quote scripture in verse, and yet you don't put it into practice? Because Father is more interested in the doers of his word than just hearers of his word. And so this is a heart issue. It is about the heart. He's not looking at our outward show, show th showcase things of what we do. He's looking at the heart issue. And the heart issue is, are you going to be willing to obey me? Are you going to be willing to bow your knee and do what I ask you to do, whether it is what he speaks to you personally or whether it is what is written in his word? Because it's all about a heart issue here. He doesn't want our sacrifices. He wants our obedience. He wants us to shama. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, see, I'm laying stumbling blocks before this people. So are you surprised that maybe you get some stumbling blocks? Maybe you get some hiccups along the way? Maybe you go through some destruction in your life? Every now and then there's something that comes into your life that throws you on another path? Well, maybe the Father is putting stumbling blocks there. Why? Because he needs to get our attention. And the fathers and the sons together shall stumble on them, and the neighbor and the friend shall perish. So you see, the, sum, the stumbling block is either going to get you to be able to come to your knees and to repent, or it's either going to bring you to destruction. The choice is yours. So when he puts stumbling blocks in our life, so maybe you go through something, maybe you lose your job, or maybe there's an illness that comes or something that happens in your life that happens, then this is a time for us to take stock, to humble ourselves before the Father and ask him, what is there, Father, that maybe is not pleasing to you? Father, show me what is this thing that's come in my life. Thus, says, thus said Yahuwah, see, a people shall come from the north, from the land of the north, and a great nation is stirred up from the furthest from the furthest parts of the earth. They strengthen their bow and spear, and they are cruel and have no compassion. Their voice roars like the sea, and they ride on horses, set in array as a man for battle against you, O daughter of Zion. Understand, those four horses of the book 
of revelation. They have started running and they are carrying with them much destruction. The white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, they are bringing the destruction. We have many enemies around us we might not be facing right now. Right now, we might not be facing a war, but war is imminent because it says the in Revelation chapter 6, when he talks about the red horse, he's going to take peace from the earth and they will come against us with, with spear and with sword that they're going to come up against us. So at the end of the day, these things are there. And what is the father saying? Get back to Yahuwah or else we will receive the destruction that is going to come upon us because he's going to trample those that are not going to be able to repent and turn back to him. So it says they strengthen their bow and their spear and they are cruel and have no compassion. Verse 24, we have heard the report of it. Our hands grow weak. Distress has taken hold of us. Pain as of a woman in labor. Do not go out into the field, nor walk by the way, because the sword of the enemy, fear is on every side. So do you see? The sword of the enemy is coming our way. And so I just want to quickly read you in Revelation chapter 6, where he says, And another horse, a fiery red went out and it was given to one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and they should slay one another and and a great sword was given to him. So understand, this is going to come. So just as this is what has happened in the book of Jeremiah, understand there's double prophetic words that come forth. There's word that's been and then there's word that's going to come again. And so that is why Jeremiah is so prophetic. So in verse 25, he says, uh, verse 24, We have heard the report of it, and our hands grow weak. Distress has taken hold of us, pain as of a woman in labor. You see, what did Yeshua say? When we're going to come to the place of where you hear wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and disease, he says it's going to be like labor pains. And so what is he saying over here? That it's like a woman in labor because this is the beginning of the sorrows. It's the beginning of the distress that's going to come like labor pains upon a woman. Do not go out into the field nor walk by the way because of the sword of the enemy, fear is on every side. O daughter of my people, gird on sackcloth and roll about in ashes. Make mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation because suddenly the rav ravager shall come upon us. So do you see what is the attitude of heart that we should have right now? We need to teshuva, we need to repent. There is a call for us to come back to a place of repentance, of where we come into a place of sackcloth, a humility, humbling ourselves before him, asking him to forgive us for the things that is the wickedness going upon the earth. That's why he needs intercessors that can stand in the gap and repent on behalf of the Father for what is going on. I have made you a trier and a stronghold among my people, so that you know and shall try their way. And all of them are rebels of rebels, walking as slanderers. You see, slandering one another, as opposed to being able to believe what the Father says, trust what the Father says, but when someone stands up and speaks truth, there's slandering that takes place, and they slander that person. They are bronze and iron. All of them are corruptors. Interesting. Bronze and iron mixing together the mixed seed coming together. Just like spoken of in the book of Daniel. Where iron and clay are going to come together. So there is a mixed seed that's coming. 
and this will be the corruption that is coming upon the earth because of the mixed seed. I bellow, the bellows have burnt the leads. The lead has been consumed by fire. The refiner has refined in vain. For those who are evil have not, have not been separated. So do you see? Father has brought his refining fire. Father has brought his fire of purification upon the people, but they have not heeded to even the purification of the Father. Even though the fire has come, they do not want to accept the fire, and they do not want to separate themselves from evil. They shall call them rejected silver because Yahuwah has rejected them. And so how sad where there are a people that are his people that he's going to reject because like silver has to be refined by the fire. They have not allowed the potter to be the potter or the silversmith or the goldsmith. That's why he says, go and buy gold refined by fire so that he can see himself in the reflection of your life and that he can blow those impurities out of us that are not of him. So we thank Abba Yahuwah for his word. Amen. Shalom.